Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Grow Big TV. Hey, guys. Thanks for Hi, coming guys. In. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in and hanging out with us tonight. We have a really good subject to talk about. And one of them is onions, which I really suck at growing. So maybe I will even learn a few things here. And there are some tips that I've also learned along the way, but it's never made a giant onion of any sorts. So I'm really excited to uh, talk about that tonight. Hey guys, thanks for coming in. Jane Doe's here like clockwork. Ginger Ninja, Kathleen, thank you guys for coming in and hanging out. Appreciate you. See, one of the best things about following a lot of people in the UK, they grow the hugest onions. <laughs> and we are fascinated for a long time with the people from the UK and the largest, growing the largest vegetables. So a lot of it has to do with a little fertilizer. A lot of it has to do with timing. A lot of times it has to do with, are you picking the right onion? So we're going to go over all that stuff. Let's see who just came on in. A good time to put the glasses back on. I just lost them again. Oh, no. <laughs> all right. again. I got two. I got two sets. I guess but I lost another one I just put down a second ago. What happened? Oh, look at all the people in the side chat. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, share us out if you can. If you haven't noticed, we got a new ticker at the bottom, and it talks about MI Gardener, Mary's Heirloom Seeds, and it also talks about our memberships. Now, we have decided um, just today, actually, to add in a new membership. It's only $2.99 a month. Um, and it gets you access to our lives and the e or our lives that we do just for members and our emojis. So if you're interested in becoming a member at $2.99, um, you can purchase that and hang out with us once a month, as well as take advantage of all those cool chat emojis. So with our memberships, the first one's Biochar, the Biochar Club. That's I think that's a really cool, cool name. Originally, I was going to say, hey, how about the compost club? <laughs> then I'm like, you know what? Let's take it a step above that. Let's take a really cool name that nobody's ever used. Biochar. And Quirky goes, boom. Boom. <laughs> boom. I've seen, I've seen the marshmallow, man, with this boom. I think I love it. So $2.99, the biochar club. $4.99, the boom club. $9.99, the big guard. Uh, Grow Big Garden Club in 1999, the Masters Gardeners Club. Yeah. So a lot of benefits for all, and uh, we really appreciate your support. And who else came on in? We got a lot of people that just came on in. The Purple Tea Bearer, Wanda Moses, it's the Marshmallow Man, Perry Post. Welcome in, welcome in. So good to see you. Uh, 54 Cows here, Connie Davidson, J -J -J Juby, Tammy N, Hook, Rod, Hook and Rod in Hand. Oh, we got a member. Ginger Ninja is a member. <laughs> you know what we need to do is we need to get Joe to do a dance on video. And then we'll, every time somebody becomes a member, we'll just play that clip. <laughs> you notice she mentions me to do the dance? No, because I ain't. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> I, I do the belly dance. <laughs> oh, that's not, that's a, just a drum roll. It's not a dance. Whoops. <laughs> Welcome in, Happy Mac, built uh, built on a rock Conestead, Chipper sixty six. There's a Jersey Twister. Oh, thank you so much, Ginger Ninja. We really appreciate that. Yeah, that's right, Happy Mac. It's the money in the chat dance. <laughs> whoop whoop! I used to dance all the time, which is. Well, I always thought I could dance, but I could never dance. It's just, you know, one of those things. Greg Bryson's here. Welcome in, Greg. It's going so good to see you. Hello, Greg. So we're going to show our six inches of soil video. And then there's becoming a green stalker. Welcome in. Hello, green stalker. And then we're going to get moving here. We got a lot of stuff to go over with onions. It's going to be an awesome live. Thank you guys, everyone, for coming. Six inches of soil feeds eight billion people. We already grow enough of all the human essential nutrients to feed everyone who's alive. Farming is the single biggest cause of biodiversity collapse, the second biggest cause of climate change. Soil is the most valuable resource on the planet, and we're degrading it without even realizing. We have come to believe that money 
is more important than soil. That idea has to change. Regenerative agriculture is farming, that we're producing food, but also farming in harmony with nature. You're working with nature, not against it. The more people see it, the more that they realise that it works. Having a regenerative agroecological system, that is surely the solution. Soils are absolutely phenomenal in the amount of carbon they can store. What we absolutely need now is urgent action from the government. Until you deal with nine retailers who have 94.5% of food sales in Britain, you're not going to have a level playing field. Consumers have a choice. They can decide to buy cheap meat from industrial farms. Really? Or they can find farmers that really value animal welfare and the environment that we're farming in. Dad started Regen Farming for the future generations to come, and that was the most selfless act he could have done. The people who are doing this are making big sacrifices. I think the potential is absolutely huge here. These farms really can change the world. It's all about the soil, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs>
So I just wanted to say that before I forget. <laughs> welcome in, Tammy. Welcome in. <clears throat> Hello, so, Randall. Let's uh, bring out my chart here. And the first thing you guys got to know is where you live is the kind of onion you're going to grow. By the way, this is the most complicated thing other than growing them. So people have no idea whether they need short day or long day onions. They always get them confused. So this is if you want to grow onions, this is something that you definitely want to pay attention to. So welcome in Mike's Chaotic Gardening, Purple Tea Bear. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so know where you live. So here's the inter intermediate day onion. So it goes with the latitude. So it matters what that it, what happens is when a bulb, it goes for the hours of the day. So that's very important. Now, if you leave live on a borderline of these states, uh, I would go to the intermediate. And like if I lived up north and lived right where that uh, highlighted is, you could still go up north. But if you live south, then you go with the south zone on a, on a line. So otherwise, you could still grow the intermediate day zone. It's not a problem at all. Just like if, if you live on a border, that's what I would choose. So that is intermediate day. So just reading there, best suited for growing at latitude, 2530. Uh, initiate bowl forming at 10 to 12 hours of daylight. Require mild winter climate, zone 7 and warmer. Usually planted for fall and mature in late spring. So to kind of change a little bit, you try to change when you grow your onions. This is short day onion. You notice that's where all the heat is. So uh, let's go to the next page. Oh, um, best suited for latitude 2530. Nishay Bulbin, day, late, uh, day length reaches 10 to 12 hours a day. The earlier they are planted, the larger they get. So if you're up long day, which I'm, I'm looking to start my onions very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very soon. Now, you got to make sure there's not going to be a freeze of 25 degrees and colder. So that is key. 25 degrees colder is going to kill your plant. If it has five days around 32, 29, 31, you should be fine. But once it goes below that, guys, you are you could get in trouble. So long day onion. Look at the length of the long day onion. Best suited for latitudes 37 to 47. Initiate bulb when day length reaches 14 to 16 hours. Uh, do extremely well in northern states. Sweet uh, storage and especially varieties are available. Excellent for long storage. Oh, that's basically what it says. Usually very sweet. Onions growing guide. Welcome in, Serena. Christy Baum is here. Welcome in. All right. Intr introduction. Onions are one of the oldest vegetables in continuous cultivation dating back at least 4,000 B.C. The ancient Egyptians are known to have cultivated this crop along the Nile River. There are no known wild ancestries. However, the center of the origin is believed to be in Afghanistan. Afghanistan, guys. <laughs> Afghanistan and its surrounding regions. Onions are are among the most widely adapted vegetable crops. They can be grown from the tropics to sub-Arctic regions. The adaption is pri primarily due to differing, re uh, differing response to day length. Unlike most other species, day length influences the bulb in, in onions as opposed to flowering. And that's what we're going to talk about when we get those onion bulbs. Because when you have the onion bulbs, they are made to flower and seed. Because they're they're biennials. Yeah. So the so you got to be careful because a lot of people say they see these little onions. Well, they're not made to actually become bulbs. Even though they can, they're meant to flower and seed. Onions are grouped into three groups based on their response to hours of day length. The short day varieties bulb with day lengths of 10 to 13 hours. Intermediate intermediate varieties bulb with day lengths of 13 to 14 hours. And they're found to be mid temper temperate regions of the country. Finally, finally, long day onions are adapted to the most northern cl climates of the United States as well as Canada and bulb with day lengths greater than 14 hours. Dude, I can't live without onions. 
I, I mean, absolutely love onions. I have <laughs> onions on every, I taco everything. I put onions in everything. Chili. It's, it's necessary, especially, oh man, my husband yells at me that those little green onions that you put in the garden that get yay big. I uh, just eat those raw. I put them, I clean them up really good and just put salt on them and eat them like, like candy. So, um, yeah, it also really makes me angry that I can't grow them well enough to eat them because it's like my favorite thing to eat. So I'm, I hope you guys are soaking up this information. <laughs> I tell you with onions, I used to have onion sandwiches. I didn't Ooh, care yeah. for me. I wanted onion sandwiches. Uh, so I would come home, my grandmother, I come home from uh, practice or something. My grandma had an onion sandwich ready for me. She know how much I love them. And my stomach, everything, everything just feels so good. And it's, to me, it's a very homey thing with onions. Um, I, I love onions. Um, and I like um, when Joe eats pierogies, I'm sure you can't possibly eat pierogies without some onions. on. <laughs> I think everybody's seen all those onions in my <laughs> I mean, just <geez. laughs> You know, I liked onions so much as a kid. I try to eat it like an apple, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> you guys, if you, if you brought... do dehydrate them, just be careful, because I dehydrated them once in the house, and everything smelled. Like, my coat smelled. Like, my sweaters smelled. Like, everything smelled like onions. It was horrible. <laughs> Don't dehydrate them in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and if you kiss anyone, make sure you have some parsley. But we'll get more into that. <laughs> onions were brought to this country by early European settlers. These onions were adapted to cl uh, temperature climate found throughout the Northeast, where the first European settlements occurred. Varieties from warmer regions in the Mediterranean eventually made their way to the southeastern United States. In, partic in particular, varieties from Spain and Italy would become more important to the Badalia onion industry, which is the, um, I think, the vegetable of Georgia, the state vegetable in New jo uh, Georgia, I believe. Yeah, Badalia the onions come from Georgia. There you go. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think, honestly, I think there's a city in Georgia called Vidalia, and that's why. But by the way, Vidalia onions are the bomb. You cannot grow them because the company grows them, but I'm 99% sure that's what a Walla Walla onion is. And they were a lot, very expensive back in the day, too. Oh, so, it's so delicious, cool. man. Hey, so, Eric Wild. Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate Eric you. Wild, man. Welcome. And Brampton Garden is here. Welcome in, guys. Um, okay. So the first of these varieties came through Bermuda and were thus referred to as Bermuda, the Bermuda onions. Yellow granite, the standard for Vidalia onions, has its own or origin from early grana. Gr uh, yeah, grana. Uh, the variety early grano 502 resulted in the Texas early grano, which became one of the earliest parents for the yellow granite hybrid. And I think that's uh, Texas, their vegetable. Like New Jersey's the tomato, and I think Texas is actually the onion too. The other parent was YB986, which was a, a selected from Excel, which in turn derived from the white Bermuda. So this is a little history, guys. Everybody, should, We always start with a little history of each vegetable. The Granix name is a combination of Grano and Excel, the original parents. The Vidalia industry, onion industry began in 1931 when a grower of the name of Mo, Mosey Coleman grew the first short day onions in Toombs County. These mild onions were immediately popular with customer at the beginning of the depression. The onions sold for $3.50 for a 50 pound bag and a considerable amount of money at the time. Soon other growers became interested in these mild onions. The industry grew slowly and steadily for several decades. Its growth was fueled by the fact that the city of Adalia sat in the intersection of important roads prior to construction of interstate highway system. Nice. You want to go ahead? Yeah. In addition, the supermarket chain, Piggly Wiggly, maintained a distribution center in Vidalia and would buy the onions and distrib wow, distribute <laughs> them through their stories. Slowly, the industry began to gain national reputation in order to help promote the onions further. Onion festivals were started in both Vidalia and Glensville. 
in the mid 1970s. Transplant production and direct seeding. <clears throat> While the enclosed plants may appear dry, don't be alarmed. They're simply dormant. Don't worry if you can't don't worry if you can't plant them immediately, even if the roots and the tips begin to dry out. The onions can live off the off the bulb for approximately three weeks. Don't keep them too long in the box and keep them in a well-ventilated, cool area until you can plant them. Um, do not put them in soil or water. Now, that's, mm. now the Dixondale Farms is where I get my plants from. And you know what? Let me show you their uh, website. Just hold on one second. Because one think year you got me onions from there, and I was like so happy with them. They were beautiful. Unfortunately, I just I I, I suck at growing them, but they were beautiful onions. And I yeah, it's probably the best onion sets I've ever seen. So um, Dixondale really has one up that for sure. So this is Dixondale Farms. So I highly recommend you go in here. It's the top place in the United States to buy your onions. So here, let's go to long day onion plants. Uh, man, I'm so jealous of the UK people that can grow like a 10 pound onion. Because if I could grow like a 10 pound onion, I'd be a happy girl. Now you could grow from seed and you could grow from starts. So this is all good. But these plants, when you get them, guys, I mean, they're so healthy. They're, they're perfect. They are so perfect. And there's so many varieties you can get. So, okay, over here. I don't think so, Rick. Um, actually, it was Joe that got them for me. I got the Elsa Craig ones. So the, I'm pretty sure I can grow those in my area. But, so this is what they look like. Jealous. <laughs> so when you get it from the star, they'd be wrapped in a rubber band like that. And you'll get like 30, 40, 50 usually around 30 for a per band but and they're just very healthy so what we're talking about what corky was talking about well well ventilated you can't leave these like that because they're moist on the bottom so if you leave them in your in a spot in your room and leave it wrapped like that for a long period of time they kind of get a little mildew on the bottom so just be careful usually you're good for one or two weeks but anything longer than that Typically four or five, six weeks, uh, I would uh, definitely up unwrap that was after two weeks. That's just my suggestion. Okay. Why? Because I learned myself. <laughs> I'm at time arrangements all the time. I don't have all the time. So just make sure when you get them, un unwrap them after a week or so. You don't want that mildew to happen. Well, you guys, don't be alarmed either. It takes a long time to become a good gardener. A lot of things actually... It's like a giant science experiment, you know, and if you aren't good at growing it, try it the next year or try it in the fall. If you tried it in the spring, try it in the fall um, and see if that works out better for you. But don't give up on on it. You know, um, there's been several years like I grew carrots and they absolutely sucked. I got carrots like this big <laughs> and um, I, I, I love carrots so much. It's one of my favorite one of my favorite vegetables. I love vegetables in general, but um, it's one of my favorite vegetables, so I didn't give up on it and I grew them the next year and I had a huge crop of them. So don't give up on it and keep doing it. And maybe like in the few years, like just do a couple seeds, maybe three seeds three or four seeds, not just not carrots, but if you suck at something, just do a couple seeds, see how you, the soil works, see, you know, how you plant it versus the next year and stuff like that. You might find out little tricks, um, that might help you. So don't give up. So Rick said they come around 50 plus, which is awesome. Gold sniping uh, farmers here. Welcome in. Welcome in. How to garden is here. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it, it takes time to learn. And it's, I always talk about probably every episode, put stuff in your pocket. Put stuff in your pocket. During this live, put stuff in your pocket. Because most everybody I know has a problem growing onions. But once you get it, you kind of like, oh, that's all I had to do. You know, it's just maybe one thing. So hopefully you guys can put a little more things in your pocket. Okay, let's get back to the guide. Okay, sorry. One second, I might have to scroll down again. 
So once I go out, we'll have to scroll down and find where we're at. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh wait, go up. I think we were there. Uh... Right here. Yeah. Okay. While the enclosed plants may appear dry, don't be alarmed. They are simply dormant. Don't worry if you can't plant them immediately. If even if the roots and tips begin to dry out, the onions can live off of the bulb for approximately three weeks. Don't keep them uh, too long in a box and keep them in a well ventilated cool area until you can plant them. Do not put them in soil or water. Planning your garden is important to make sure onions or related alums, 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 <laughs> uh, for all least three, for at least three years. Sites with the history of onion diseases and severe weed problems should be avoided. However, once the site has been selected, a soil test um, should be taken to determine the optimum level of fer fertility and soil pH. The plant bed soil should have a pH range of 6, point, or 6 or 6.5 for optimum growth. If your soil pH is low, applications of lime are recommended. Okay, so uh, one thing I got Ace Hardware today was this rapid soil test kit. But it's just not like testing the moisture or your pH. And also test your NPK. And there's 40 tests to it, guys. 40. That's exactly what I needed. This is awesome. Um, so I, I got this at Ace Hardware. So maybe if you go to Ace Hardware or go to uh, Amazon, you can find something like this. And I think it was $17. But for 40 tests and testing my soil all the time, this is a great, great um, gift to me. Happy Valentine's Day, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll take over for a little bit. For, uh, oh, go ahead. Fine. Oh, yeah. um, sh he will. He'll post that on the community tab for you, Juju B, and for any others um, that are interested in that. And um, yeah, I did a soil test from Walmart and it was probably around the same price. So that's probably about the average price for a soil test kit. So I only did mine because we had just put new soil in and um, I'm so glad I did because it absolutely had nothing in it. There was no nitrogen in it. Zero. I was so angry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's really, really important to test your soil, y'all. So. so welcome in, Frog5. If you guys see somebody new to the chat, welcome them in, too, because we want to continue having you know new people here each week so if they feel welcome they'll come back if they don't feel welcome and you know like they're not even there more, more or less you just keep on going to another channel so if there's anybody new try to welcome them in and we appreciate you guys okay so uh lime is preferred because it supplies both calcium and magnesium while adjusting the ph changing soil ph is a relatively slow process Therefore, if low pH is suspected, early soil testing and lime application is uh, advantageous to ensure the soil pH is corrected in sufficient time for planting. So you guys are going to notice on uh, every single episode we have, we talk about testing your soil. Because nobody does it. And when we're trying to get rid of all these high fertilizers and all this stuff and trying to go more organic for our own health, we should be testing the soil. And over time, you're going to, I think we're all going to figure out why we did this. Right away, it's like, oh, I'm just happy to have a garden. I'm happy to have something outside. I'm happy to just plant, plant in a container. I just believe this is important to learn this way. Right. So soil, soil pH can take several months to change with lime applications. Sulfur is critical for proper onion production. 12% sulfur applied pre-plant. So when you're pre-planting, sulfur is very important. The additional nitrogen, or to which is N, can be supplied in one of two applications of calcium nitrate. So again, just look for the N. Don't get don't confuse yourself. So 1500. Uh, apply it every four weeks post seeding. It should be noted that any fertilizer that supplies the required nutrients as required by the soil test can be produced 
plant bed onions. More recent work indicates that high P applications at plant beds seem to have no effect. However, plant beds that have not been fertilized properly at seeding may require uh, require pop up fertilizer to overcome deficiencies during cooler months. It is critically important that seed beds be irritated regularly to develop a good plant stand. A tenth of an inch of water applied several times a day may may be needed to ensure consistent oil moisture. Now, this might sound all confusing, guys, but we're going to try and narrow it down to make it easier for you. Um, because, yeah, if I looked at this and I never grew onions before, I'm like, what the heck am I doing and what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> uh, to make it simple right off the bat, uh, when planting your onions, your pre-plant, you want your NPK, all right? Um, so your NPK, they usually want to, and Dixon Dale Farms, this is their recommendation, a 10, 20, 10, because you want those roots to start getting established in the ground. You want the nitrogen to start growing up the plant. But when the plant goes on, you don't want to keep on doing the P and K. You want that nitrogen. It's almost like a grass growing. So that's what you're going to have. Wow. Brian's Garden, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you. That. That's Thank very, you. very nice of you. We really appreciate it. And that really helps for seeds and everything else that we're trying to build with our channel. So thank you so much. You're so sweet. Uh, is this supposed to be almost like a dance time? <laughs> you got to like use one of your like faces or something that you use and just we'll, we'll save that and you can, you know. I do have that somewhere. So. <laughs> get, get down with your bad self every once in a while. <laughs> well, Brian, thank you so much. We appreciate that more than you could imagine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and welcome to the channel. <laughs> that's wow. That's uh, that that leaves me speechless. Thank you. <laughs> Onions can be directly sown in, in in the soil for production. This eliminates all the fertilizer and other management requirements of transplant production. The soil, be, the soil should be prepared so that it is free of plant residue. The soil surface should be smooth with the proper amount of soil moisture. So we're talking about the soil and what it's going to feel and what is it going to take up and how is it going to take up. The soil surface should be smooth with the proper amount of soil moisture. So that means you don't want to grow in dirt. <laughs> you want moisture. You want to keep that moisture there. You want the moisture to drain. Seeds should be set so at four to six inches in a row at a depth of a quarter to a half an inch. More or less, you want it about that half an inch uh, if you're doing direct seed. Um, the plant stand will be sim similar to transplanted onions with four rows of slightly raised bed with 12 to 14 inches between the rows. Direct sowing can save a tremendous amount of, on, on cost and labor. Okay, direct sow is really good, guys. Um, if you have your own seeds, but just an FYI, it can take up to three months for you to get your, your seeds going. So if you, um, can, and you like, say for instance, you're in zone six B like we are, you need to start your onions like here soon. And it's like three months. You need to have them hardy and ready to go so you can put them outside. So, and I like doing sets. Those are great, but there are some onions you can't get in sets. So um, think about buying seeds somewhere and, and doing and making your own sets. Um, you can do that as well. Now, there's a big, big difference from starting from seed, getting a set, and getting a bulb. You don't want a bulb, guys. Do not choose the bulb. It might seem like the easiest thing. Oh, I put this in the ground. It goes up. It's easy. It's already established from the year before. No, they're meant to. They're meant to flower, and they're meant to seed. You don't want that. You want to. I'm telling you, Dixon Dale Farms. Those starts, guys. What an unbelievable thing. Yeah. But you know what? Seeds. These seeds cost cheap. Hold on. When we, uh, Cork, when we come back, we got the soils and fertilizer management. Okay. Um, these seeds. Yeah, those are the uh, those are the best onions. Those are really cool. So these are four dollars. Now, just let you guys know, I have a whole chart of what seeds are viable usually, and it goes here. All I got all the vegetables here it goes all the way up to see what's 
what you can grow the next year for seeds. If you have them for five years, 10 years. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do a little. There are lots of vegetables that are biannual. Parsley is. Um, it After two years, it will stop. It will go to seed. Carrots are another one. Onions are another one. So if you leave them in the ground for a couple of years, they will go to seed. And then yes. you can save the seeds. But, it, I mean, it's up to you what you would like to do. But don't buy something, like he said, at bulbs. Because it, it, they will. They're they're meant to go to seed. So Now, I'm going to have a series on this channel. Old seeds, onion seeds. Because I have a lot of seeds. <laughs> I have a lot of old seeds. And we're going to do a test. I'm probably going to throw some out because there might be from for south, down south, not from my zone, just to see if they will grow. Um, because I try to keep them nice, cool, dry Aww. place. Another oh, super chat. Nice. Thank you, Wanda. You are the best. We really appreciate you. Thank you so <laughs> much for doing that. You're the best. Thank you so much, Wanda. Um, so this is 2003 seed. This is gonna. This should be grow fine for me this year, but the older they get, especially for onions, or mainly onions, um, they will they won't take up. They won't go. That's the problem with onion seeds. So, but we're gonna do a test on that this year, and I'm excited to see what actually comes up. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, because a lot of people have like all the onions. Why didn't my onions come up? Why not? Oh, well, because that's one of the things that just don't grow after a period of time. There we go. J -j -j Jujube said, my onion seeds were all some work, but not a lot. Exactly. Yeah. It's it. Yeah. They're a little bit of work, guys. So don't get discouraged. Now, I had tomato seeds that came up 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so certain seeds, if you leave them in a proper uh, condition, they're going to grow fine. So don't be afraid of, I mean, I had some marigold seeds that lasted 10 years. And I got to look at my garage for those. I have a whole bag full of was unbelievable from about five years ago. Oh, thank you, Wanda. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for doing that. You're so sweet. You know what? This is a good time to take a little break for a second and have show Jujubes. Did you know segment? Did you know? 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 Here we go. Did you know? Onion edition. Did you know the three most common onion colors are red, yellow, and white? Did you know that there are less than 1,000 onion farmers in the United States? Altogether, about 125,000 acres of onions are planted in the U.S. each year. Did you know the average American eats almost 18.8 .8 pounds of fresh and storage type onions each year? To keep up, that's 350 semi truckloads of onions per day. Did you know that the country that eats the most onions per capita is Libya, where each person eats about 66.8 pounds of onions each year? Did you know, according to an old English rhyme, the thickness of an onion skin can help predict the severity of winter? Thin skin means mild winter, and a thick skin indicates a rough winter ahead. Did you know that Gareth Griffin, a farmer in Guernsey, United Kingdom, set the world record with a 9-kilogram onion? Griffin produced an onion weighing a whopping 8.97 kilograms. That is 19.77 pounds for the National English Honor Society Giant Vegetable Competition. Did you know? Did you know that Pace Foods, the picante and salsa company, uses 21 million pounds of fresh onions every year? Did you know if you eat onions, you can get rid of onion breath by eating parsley? Yellow onions make up more than 75% of the world's production of onions. Did you know the official state vegetable of Georgia is the Vidalia onion? Likewise, in Texas, the state vegetable is the Texas sweet onion. And last but not least, in Blue Hill, Nebraska, no female wearing a hat that could scare a timid person can be seen eating onions in public. Did you know? Did you know? 
did you know? Thank you so much, Jujuby. <laughs> that was awesome. I like. I, she did a great job. Yeah, that was amazing, and she did it with a like. She was numbed up with the mouth. <laughs> she, had dentist, she had dentist work done today. She did that for us. So thank you so much, Juliana. That, that was really good. And I think you sound better, actually. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> now, that takes uh, a lot. You, you, you know, your teeth work and stuff like that. Now you have to concentrate and do it onions. <laughs> that's not easy. Mm -mm. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Yep. Okay, let's get back to the show. So we'll have a Dr. Paula Ruffin segment on nutrition. That's going to come up in the next hour. So let's get back to our growing guide. Well, oh, wrong one. Erase uh -oh. that. Whoops. Sorry <laughs> about that. That was excellent. Did you know segment, though? It was. Okay, let me just scroll on down again. Did I go? Was it this one? Yes. Okay. I think so. No, mine had to do with poop. I got I got a number to bottom is when I do this. Nope, we did that. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, maybe it was. I got a number to this. It's right here. Yes. Yeah, soil, yeah, soil and fertilizer management. Okay. Onions grow best in fertile, well-drained soils. However, most sandy loam, loamy sand, or sand soils, sandy soils, will be advantageous to sweet onion production. <laughs> I'm reading like Joe. What happened to me? <laughs> These soils are inherently low in sulfur, which allows greater flexibility in sulfur management to produce sweet onions. Avoid soils with heavy clay con content and coarse sandy soils. Clay soils tend to have a higher sulfur content, which can lead to pungent onions. Exceedingly sandy soils are more difficult to manage because they require more fertilizer and water. Fertilizer and lime requirements should always be based on a recent property. Properly obtained soil sample. Obtain the soil sample at a few months prior to crop establishment in order to determine lime requirements and make necessary lime applications in a timely manner. If soil test results show pH below 6.0, apply the disc in a dolomit lime. I don't know. How, how do you pronounce that? Dolomitic lime. Perfect. Okay. Two to three months before the land prep preparation to bring the pH to an optimum range of 6.2 to 6.5. It is essential to apply sufficient lime to keep the soil at pH above 6.0. Low pH can cause nutrient deficiencies during the growing season. Yeah, that sucks. Also, the high rates of fertilizer used in producing onions can cause a pH to drop during the growing season. If the pH is not corrected at the beginning of the onion season, the nutrient deficiencies could occur during the year and reduce yield. Calcium and phosphorus deficiencies can often be linked to low pH onion require more fertilizer than are used in most vegetable crops. So you just have to basically fertilize the crap out of it. Nutri <laughs> nutritional needs are different during the growing season, every two to three weeks after planting, fertilize with uh, ammonium sulfate. Yep. Okay. And alkaline soils and calcium nitrate in acidic soils. Sprinkle it on top of the original fertilizer strip at the rate of a half a cup per 10 feet of row. Water the onions after every application. Stop fertilizing when the onions start to bulb. Um, phosphorus is essential for rapid root development. It is found in adequate levels in the most soils, but is not readily available at low soil temperatures. 
Because of these factors, under most conditions, all of the P, which is phosphorate, phosphorate, phos yep. oh my gosh, <laughs> phosphorus should be applied uh, pre-plant and incorporate before transplanting. Um, this soil amount should be counted as part of the total seasonal fertilization or fertilizer application. Potassium is an important factor in plant water relations. Cell wall formation and energy um, reactions in the plant. Uh, potassium is also subject to leaching from heavy rainfall or irrigation. A low K level, which K is potassium guys um, on the chart. A low K level makes plants more susceptible to cold injur injury. Um, sulfur is an essential element for uh, plant, plant growth. Early applications of sulfur are advisable to both direct seeded and transplanted onions. Boron B is required <clears throat> by direct seeding or transplanting uh, transplanted onions in the field. Do not <clears throat> exceed the recommendation or recommended amounts since boron can be toxic to onions. Zinc, Zn, excessive amounts of Zn can be toxic to apply only if needed. Zinc is usually added in a pre-plant fertilizer. Magnesium, which is Mg, <clears throat> levels in the soil must be adequate for good onion growth. If the dolomitic limestone is used in the liming program, it will usually supply some of the required MG. So that's good to know. So there's a little MG in the limestone if you get that particular limestone. You know what's funny? Every time we say well, it's dolomite, I think a dominite. <laughs> now I can't yeah. even say that's a What's horrible that? word. Dynamite. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, magnesium I've used on a lot of things. Um, I've used it also around my peppers to give them a little boost as well. And it works. It works good. Hey, guys, it's very important to do this because our show was from the beginning gardener to the more advanced gardener. So we got to make sure all the levels and everything is right and put out there so a lot of people might say what the heck are they talking about we mentioned that before just put stuff in your pocket or go back to this video or take That's notes what, take notes um it's still the easiest thing for the be most beginning gardener is a 10 20 10 when you start when you start your plant and once it's established you're putting a high nitrogen level on and if you can find something that's organic, that's what we want to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Plant oh, you're gonna do it? Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll do every two pages or whatever breaks. This is okay. sort of a break. So and all right, planting. Plant your onions four to six, six weeks before the last estimated spring freeze. Um, you could talk to your uh, just look it up online. It's very easy to find your last date. Um, or call your extension service and they can tell you what it is. For best growth and yield, onion needs fertilizer right from the start. Use a fertilizer with the middle number higher than other two, such as 10, 20, 10. So that's what we I just said right there. Do you ever try, have a, a hard time finding fertilizer that's a 10, 20, 10? Ace Hardware. <laughs> oh, okay, because I can never find one. It's usually like zero to zero. I'm mm -hmm. like, what? I'm like, how am I supposed to grow plants like that? So I'm going to either have to buy on Amazon or go to Ace Hardware. <laughs> yeah, yeah try, not organic. Right, Mike? Yeah. You could try something um, to find the... Oh, let, me see, let me see if I got something. I got something right here. Hold on. If you got bone meal, right? Here, we'll go back. We'll go back to this in a second. There I am. Okay, so this is all organic, right? If you combine these together, if I fall off the chair, you guys can get a laugh. <laughs> Blood meal. All right, this is organic. This is a thirteen. So if you combine this. 
with bone meal. That's a 15. All right. So right off the bat, I had, then you got to find something for your K. But, you know, I have a 13, 15 right there. That works out well, and this is organic. Can you get just the phosphorus? You can't, can you? Uh, yeah, I think you can. Can you? Yep. But I think it's a very high dose. So I, I, my recommendation is use it as a liquid form and try to narrow it down as a very low rate. Use more water for that level. Because they have other stuff that's just way too high and you can't use that. Um. Just make sure after you put it. See, what you were trying to do is trying to get those roots to grow, guys. That's all you're trying to do off the initial stage. You want that root to grow, good growth. After that, after you're growing it, it's all nitrogen. Yeah. All nitrogen. Just like your grass. You ever see grass fertilizers? They're all really high up there. It's basically the same. It's not the same thing, but it's something a little similar. Wellness with Frugal Mama. Come on, welcome on in. Good to see you. Yeah, it's uh okay. I'm sorry, Uncle Lau said something. Hydroponic pot store. Oh would... yeah, I imagine you could if I went to a place where they sell pot or you know. And I actually have one literally like five miles from here. Uh, it's like a pot growing facility, so I could probably go there. But I really don't want to. I really don't want to do that. <laughs> I just don't want to do that. So, but I'll figure it out. I just, it's really hard getting, especially with organic fertilizers. It's really hard to get that number up. Really hard. So Kathleen goes trifecta. Trifecta is great because your middle number is higher than the other two. That yeah. is, that's what you want. That's what, uh, I mean, might not be as high as you want, but that is a good fertilizer. Trifecta is perfect. It's, it's really good. And I kind of just let you guys know. Yeah, so Judge Judge Juby goes um, 46. So again, that's way too high. So somehow you got to dilute that. You don't want to put something like that anywhere near your mm -hmm. your plants. Um, well, with phosphorus you can use. Maybe I'm thinking of potassium with bananas i think you can get phosphor phosphorus from bananas too and um, you can make your own banana tea and i've done that before um by using banana peels and then putting them in water and like making my own banana tea but i'm really careful now because everything has poison in it so I'm really careful with what I'm getting from the grocery store. And it's not like I'm getting, I guess I could get bananas organically, but do I really trust that too? Probably not. Yes. And my dog has eaten my rose tone before. I had a giant like American bulldog and he got into the back shed in my one house and ate my rose tone. I mean, the stuff stinks. <laughs> so I don't blame him. He was like, I got to get my nose in that. I got to do it. Um, but yeah, it was pretty stanky and he was pretty gross. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back on back to we can find it now. <laughs> it's always not the easiest thing to find where we left off. Let me see. There we go. All right. So dig a trench that's four inches deep, four inches wide, four feet, <laughs> four feet deep, four feet wide. Sprinkle half a cup of fertilizer for 10, uh, 10 linear feet uh, in a row. Cover the fertilizer with two inches of soil. Plant the onion six from the edge. Say right there, six. Yeah. Six from the edge of the trench on both uh, both sides of the trench. Do not plant the onions in the trench. Leave a two-inch margin between the onions and outside of the bed plant the onions one inch deep and no deeper yes you know that you'll get rot so you don't want to plant it too deep as this will inhibit their ability to bulb if you want the onions to grow more to maturity space them four inches apart if you prefer to harvest them some earlier as green onions space them two inches apart and pull every other onion during the growing season leaving the rest to grow to maturity 
So if you're planting them close together, guys, I tell you what, you could cut up those onions when they're growing. Uh, there's so much stuff you could do with those onions. I think it's great. Um, you could dehydrate them. You can make them to a powder. You know, even if they don't bulb, those onions, you know, you could just leave like like chives, right? Mm -hmm. I love chives in my omelets. Same, basically the same thing. When planting several rows of onions, leave 16 inches between the outside edge of the bed one bed and the outside edge of the next. The space from the center of the fertilizer trench to the center of the next should be 36. Onion practices. Harvest maturity is reached when 20 to 50% of the onion tops are down. Now, this is this is interesting, guys. Let me... Uh, it's page 11 when we go back. Just make sure we don't forget that. So it makes it easier for us. Um, and Dr. Paul is... Dr. Paula's video is done, so we're going to do that after I talk. When you are starting your onions, glasses off. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, serious. <laughs> you are starting your onions in your grow lights, you know, so you're starting these. And they are starting to get a little too tall, and they don't, they're not thick. You could cut them. They're going to continue to grow. Yeah. So you can cut those across. Now, if you want to, when your growing season going is growing and those onion, the stalks starting to come on up, you need to trim them too. All right. Just do new. If you want a big bulb, trim, 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 trim. I'm not talking about all the way to the bottom, but like this, when the plant goes, instead of this, cut it about six, to eight inches down, and the plant will still keep on growing. It's going to make the, uh, it's going to want the bulb. And as I said before, when you do that, make sure there's no rain in the forecast for a couple of days. That is Perfect. key. And that plant will keep on growing really well. So just give me a couple seconds. Um, also, guys, when you cut the tops off, you don't have to discard that. You can do several things with the tops. You can, uh, for me, I actually took it and put it around plants where I know like, like, cucumber bugs and stuff like that would be. So I took those onion toppers and I put them all around my cucumbers. So I did that. Um, you can also make a tea out of it. You guys can make your own teas. Um, just put it in water. I usually put like a little warm water to kind of get that pungent smell like going. The stinkier, the better. I put it in a little garden sprayer not when it's hot, obviously, um, a little garden sprayer and I spray it all over everywhere. Uh, the best place to spray it is like your squashes and zucchini where those stupid squash bugs are because that will kind of repel them. Now it's an organic method. So if it rains, it's going to wash off guys. So you'll have to continue to do it, but it's really honestly the best thing um, garlic and onions and all that stinky stuff. It really, it really goes a long way. You can also do that with chives too. Um, chives are just as smelly and they have that pungent smell. So I always have a ton of chives. They, they multiply so fast. So you can easily make that into a tea and spray that all over your garden. You're going to end up smelling but by that time, it's hot out. Your hands are filthy. You're, if you garden in your bare feet, your feet are dirty. And um, it doesn't really matter because you're going to take a shower at the end of the night anyway. <laughs> I so, absolutely love chives. Chives are so good. Yeah. If you guys never, really grown, if you guys never grown chives, you got to do it. And there, you can uh, get like onions from the, your yard too. They grow all over the place. Onion, uh, Ian was my nephew was going around our yard last year looking for these little onions. Let's let's try this out, see how it tastes. It was good. It's amazing what you can find in the yard. Um, and, if, you guys, if you guys, I'm Uncle Al. I'm sorry, Uncle Al keeps saying to use carp and make your own fresh fertilizer. That's great, but I live in an area where there's raccoons like you wouldn't believe, and I use fish emulsion. I you it stinks. I can't stand and I would put it on everything. Rose bushes, I put it on all over my garden. And a raccoon came and thought that he could eat my rose bush and thought that he could eat all 70 of my tomato plants. So if you guys have um you know raccoons and stuff that get into your garden 
and they will eat anything that's smelly. So just remember that when using like extreme measures, like making your own, you know, fish emulsion, because you're going to draw in anything that likes that smell. <laughs> so. And Serena, to answer your question, it's <laughs> usually four weeks before your frost. So four weeks before you can start planting your onions. But look at the weather forecast. If you order from uh, Dixondale Farms, they'll ship you the onions when, it, when they're ready, when you're, you're ready to be planted. So, uh, but generally it's four weeks before your frost. But again, if it's going to be you're having temperatures 25 degrees and below, no, you're not planting onions. So you look at always look at the ten day ahead schedule, and you know you got to have a little. Like we had frost in late May in New Jersey, everybody's gardens were gone, not mine. <laughs> you got to look ahead of the schedule. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna go to Doctor Paula Ruffin's piece. Sorry, I didn't mean to to interrupt you earlier, Joe. Oh, I don't know if you even did, but okay. okay. <laughs> I get on, I get, I get really passionate about gardening and then I'm just like, then I just spew information of stuff that I've learned and I'm like, so. No, oh, no, go. We're, we're being ourselves. <laughs> That's one thing you're going to get from both of us guys. We, we're going to be ourselves. There's going to be, you know, that's where we are, what we are. We're not going to pretend to be something we're not. Yeah, definitely. So, okay. This is Dr. Paula Ruffin. What does she have to say about onions and the benefits of onions? And thank you, Dr. Paula, for doing this for us. Today, we are talking onions. Onions are not just for great flavor, but they are a nutritional powerhouse as well. In today's video, we're going to go into three different areas. The first area is what makes your eyes water. We all want to know this. The second one is the five major health benefits of having onions in your diet just about every day. And the third thing is well, you're just going to have to stick around because I'm going to share with you my secret on how to use onions when you actually don't feel well. So let's get chopping and discover the magic of onions. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on more health boosting benefits. So the first thing is what makes our eyes water when we cut into an onion? When this compound is released, it has no real health benefits. When it does come in contact with your eyes, it forms a mild sulfuric acid causing that burning. But fortunately, the other sulfur-based compounds have been shown to have a variety of health benefits. They are antimicrobial and they just contribute to overall health. These compounds are believed to play a role in reducing chronic diseases, like cardiovascular disease, and even cancers. They can help to actually even boost your body's immune system. So now that we know why our eyes burn when we cut an onion, let's talk about the five biggest health benefits. The first one is our heart and the cardiovascular benefits. Onions are very high in a compound called quercetin. Quercetin is a potent antioxidant flavonoid, which means it's really high in antioxidants and it helps against cellular damage. It actually can help the blood vessels, thereby helping your whole cardiovascular system. Because of this, it's actually been shown to help lower cholesterol and blood pressure. Quercetin has actually been shown to be very potent at fighting certain cancers, especially stomach cancers and colorectal cancers. Onions also contain prebiotic fibers, which I've talked about this on videos before. Anything that contains prebiotics help to feed the good probiotics in your gut, and thereby that helps to support and promote good gut health, which can aid in digestion and regularity. Going back to quercetin and the other sulfur containing compounds, these have also been shown to help with blood sugar regulation. So when you eat onions, you actually are helping with your insulin sensitivity and improving your overall blood sugar mechanism. Onions are also incredibly high in vitamin C, which means your immune system is going to thank you for having onions every single day. Now here's the bonus benefit. Onions possess natural antimicrobial properties, which means they can help fight off harmful bacteria and promote overall wellness. Now, before I share with you my secret about what we do with onions for being sick, I'm going to tell you how to store onions. Onions need to be stored in a cool, dry place. But once you cut into them, you should never put an onion in your refrigerator unless it is wrapped completely and sealed. If you leave an onion open in your refrigerator, it's actually going to absorb bacteria in your refrigerator and you don't want that. So wrap up that onion really well before you put it in the refrigerator. 
Okay, so now we've come to the place where I'm going to share with you my secret for using onions for when you don't feel well. When my daughter was little and she would get an earache, she's never taken an antibiotic for this. So what I would do is I would take an onion and I would put it in a little bit of water in a pan and gently heat it. And then I'd take a cloth and I would wet that and I'd put the onions in there and form like a ball with the onions in it and put it on the ear that hurt and I would have her lay on the side of pain. And what that would do is the onion poultice would actually draw out the bacteria from her ear. And because we did this, she never ever had to take an antibiotic ever. This may sound like an old wives tale, but it's what my mom did for me and it's what her mom did for her. So there you have it. Why do onions make your eyes water? And five big compelling reasons on how onions keep your health on track as well as a really great natural way to help fight ear infections. I hope you like this video. Please share this with somebody who loves onions or maybe could use a few more of them in their life and how it can actually boost their immune system. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you on the next one. Thank you, Dr. Paula Ruffin. That was pretty awesome. Awesome sauce. For those of you who don't know, I just put up a poll what is your favorite onion? Yellow, red, or white? So I expect you to vote. Welcome in our treasured home, Fifi's Urban Homestead and Lifestyle. Our treasured home is also here. Welcome in, guys. Good to see you. Urban Garden Chronicles is here. Thank you. You guys are the best. So, yeah, that was pretty good info there. Uh, Onions. Oh, my God. My eyes are always tearing with onions. Mine don't bother me because I wear my contacts when I cut onions, and they doesn't touch my eyes then. But if I wear my glasses, uh -huh. like the onions will instantly get to my eyes then, and I, they, I will cry. But typically, if I wear my contacts, onions do not bother me. Check, check you off is here. <laughs> I can never say that. Welcome, Honey Heritage Farms. We got Howie here. Hey, Howie. Howie. Food Forest Permaculture. It's good, always good to see Howie. Um, so welcome here. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you guys for all your support. Uh, just for the people that just came on. And we do have four memberships. We uh, have the Biochar at $2.99, the Boom Club at $4.99, the Grow Big Garden Club at $9.99, and the Master Gardeners at $19.99. So I just wanted to put that out there because <laughs> usually we go into a live and we don't say it at all. So if you want to become a member, we appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for your, any kind of support you give us. Okay, let's get back to our guide. If you want to read Corky, you, got, you can. All righty. Once I find it. Number 11, I think I said. Onion praxis. Okay. Harvest maturity is reached between 20 to 50% of onion tops when onion tops are down. In most seasons, onion neck tissue <laughs> will break down when the plant is mature. In addition, early varieties are very day length sensitive and usually go down early and um, uniformly. These early varieties should be harvested when 100% of the tops go down. They can be allowed to stay in the field for a week after tops down and will continue to enlarge. This will increase yield as the bulbs continue to increase in size. Onion harvested too early may be soft and not dry down sufficiently, sufficiently uh, during uh, curing. In addition, they may begin to grow because they are not completely dormant. If the onions are harvested too late, there may be an increase in post-harvest diseases and sun scald on the shoulder of the bulb. Onions can generally withstand light to heavy frosts, but hard freezes can result in onion damage. A day or two after the freeze event, onions should be cut under severe freeze conditions. Um, the plant may be killed. Watering. <laughs> Water thoroughly after planting and regularly, therefore, onions thereafter. <laughs> onions have shallow roots, so don't let the soil 
at the base of the plants become dry and cracked. Overwatering is equally problematic. If leaves develop a yellow tinge, cut back on watering. The closer to the harvest time, the greater the need for water. However, when the onion tops start falling over, start watering and let the soil dry out before harvesting. Onion production. Onions may develop disorders that are not associated with insects, disease, or nutrition problems. Green is one of the greening is one such occurrence. This occurs when the bulb is exposed to the sunlight for an extended period of time. Early fertilizer application is needed to develop strong, healthy top, which shade the bulb during development. Um, Sunscald will occur at, did I already read that? I'm sorry. Nope. Sunscald will occur at the shoulder of all onions that are exposed to sunlight for the extended period of time. Onion insects and their control. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> the most common problems found in a growing onions are blight, purple blotch. I like that. Blotch. I don't want to get that though. And thrips. <laughs> Both blight and purple blotch are caused by fungus and are more commonly uh, during periods of high moisture. Blight appears as a small white spots around by the greenish halo. Purple blotch causes a purplish, purplish discoloration of leaves. Proper plant spacing helps increase in airflow and reduces both blight and purple blotch. Thrips also insects that, wait, hold on, I'm sorry. Thrips are insects that sometimes attack onion plants, causing the leaves to turn gray. Thrips are barely visible as a tiny yellow and dark specks. Tree thrips infestations with an application of infection decide yeah but don't uh insecticide I, I don't want those insecticides no no, so no. In fact, um i don't know what could you use um what could you use in instead of insecticide on it could you use i don't know i would <laughs> i would try to you know what that surround works too yeah, you gotta I would be use very that. and maybe I don't know. Would DE work? Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I I would just stay away from the bulb as much as possible. So I'll even cover the bulb yeah. if you're going to do that kind of. I just wouldn't use any insect, insecticide or anything. And yes, biochar. By the way, you guys, Howie told me to use biochar powder stuff um, on my. Um, cucumbers because i was getting harley quinn bugs and everything else and i put that on there that stuff works like de but it doesn't like kill the bees and stuff so definitely try um, biochar i had to grind mine into a powder so i put it in a bag and i stomped on it a lot and i made it into a power powder and then i sprinkled it all over my plants and Though I was black when I was done, um, it worked pretty good. So biochar was my friend last year for sure. And just guys, just a little note. Next Thursday, we have one of the top people in the world talking about biochar. So look forward to next Thursday's. Yeah, episode. I'm pretty excited about that. It's going to be great. Preventative measures and careful scouting can minimize and eliminate any potential problems. Onion maggots, um, Delia antiqua can be a severe pest in more can be a severe pest in more northern states. The seed corn maggot is much more common in Georgia and generally does not cause much damage as the onion magnet maggot, not magnet. The adults <laughs> of both uh, species and flies are similar to, but smaller than house flies. Adults lay their eggs in the soil near seeds or seedlings in the hatching larva seed feed on the developing plants. That's where something like DE would also work. Um, Cause I'm pretty sure that would kill like flies and stuff um, around your soil. Like, so if you spread a little DE around then the, the, the problem with that is you don't want to put it on any buds on anything that flowers because it will kill bees. However, if you sprinkle it on the ground around your plant, 
that would kill any bugs or flies that are landing in the soil and getting their larva or whatever in the soil. So that would kill flies. The only problem with that is once it rains, you have to do it again or keep doing it because any organic method, once it rains and washes off, it doesn't work anymore. So you just have to keep doing it. Is biochar the stuff you burn covered up for days? It is. It's, it's, a, it's usually like a hard wood and it's basically charcoal um, that you burn. And yes, you can use that. How he makes his, I actually was really lucky and found a giant bag of it. Um, so I used that because I don't burn enough. I don't, I mean, I do, I have a fireplace and stuff, but that burns to ash. I don't have charcoal in my fireplace like that. So, um, yeah, I found a bag of it and I used that and I, it was like a huge bag. So it pretty much lasted me the rest of the summer. The moisture content that you can put what goes into the biochar is amazing. And the biochar lasts forever. And as uh, I think, uh, hold on, how he works on, uh, he said, uh, biochar can last 50,000 years, which is absolutely amazing. But the moisture, nitrogen, I mean, the carbon, everything involved with biochar, you want that in your garden, guys. Are chickens I mean, safe around onions? Okay, that is like, okay. I feed my chickens anything, um, but um, they can't eat potatoes. Um, what else? There's like a list of things. You don't want to give them oranges, stuff like that. But onions, I'm not just going to go out there and throw them and give them a ton of onions. But if I cook something that I'm just dumping out there for them to eat, like for instance, I had leftover taco meat or something and we didn't eat it or I don't know. I just, I'll give it to the chickens. And it was mm -hmm. onions in it. Yeah, I gave it to them. I'm not, however, just going to give them handfuls of onions because onions are not good for them. But I will, however, if I cook something in it or if there's pizza that I gave them, leftover pizza that I gave them and there was onions on it. Yeah, I'll give it to them. But don't just go and give your chickens handful of onions because it's not really good for them. I meant vice versa. Will chickens hurt the plant? Um, well, I think they will eat the toppers. So you have to be really careful with that. And for me, I have like a fence around my garden. It doesn't keep them out 100% because I still had some leghorns in my garden this afternoon. Um, it doesn't keep them out, um, completely, but it sure helps. And, um, yeah, that's all I can say about that. And if you're really anal about it, you can clip your bird's wing, one wing. It'll keep them lopsided so they can't fly over in your garden. Um, but it also deters, it keeps them from being able to defend themselves or running fast or being able to fly up from predators. So you have, you know, you have to really outweigh it and figure out what's best for you. Okay. Okay. Seed, want, where, where did I start? The seed corn maggots? Yes. Seed yep. corn maggots can reduce plant stands and seed beds as the germinating seeds and small seedlings can be killed once the plants are established. Seed corn maggots are not likely to cause plant morality, but may be associated with dead and decaying plants as these plants are attracted attractive to the maggots, which will le feed on most decaying plant material. It is also uncommon to find large populations in fields shortly after uh, severe frost damage. The frost damage result in the abundance of the decaying organic matter in fields, which is attractive to seed corn maggots. Seed corn maggots can be a problem in late in the season as it a containment in um, harvest harvested bulbs. <clears throat> While they likely cause minimum damage to bulbs, the pupae can be a tightly attached to the transported and transported with bulbs, resulting in an adult fly emergence in unwanted locations. To avoid the sand loss from the seed corn maggots fields, 
um, should be plowed early to reduce the amount of fresh organic matter in the soil yeah. and or care should be taken to thoroughly treat the soil um, with the appropriate ins insecticide. By the way, that's you don't want to do that at all. That's what we are against. Cut that's what we've been talking about. And wireworms and other soil insects are frequently um, present in fields before planting. These insects tend to be more of a problem in fields that have been uh, follow and abundant with hosts or in turf. Proper weed sanitation and field preparation several weeks before or prior to planting or transplanting um, can reduce problems with soil insects. By okay. the way, like if the if you have a really good freeze that year, you probably won't have these issues. And in the past, what I wanted to do so badly was to put my actual compost in my garden beds. And I've seen a lot of people do that. They dig a ditch. They put their compost directly in their garden beds and they pull it over. And I was told that you're not really supposed to do that. Like you can do that, but you're going to create more problems with yourself and have more maggots and all that crap right directly in your soil. So it's best to just do your own separate compost bin. So guys, when we talk about our channel, I mean, yeah, we could talk. Yes, for the most part, we're talking about organic waste. When I mean, we show movies about it. But if there's other ways that want people want to grow, I'm not going to deny people. We're growing our own food. It's better than anything else in the store or anything. So, but our main thing is to grow organic. But if you don't want to do that or you don't believe in it, that's fine. We don't have to agree. You don't have to agree with everything we we talk about. But if you put stuff in your pocket that we learn, maybe sooner or later, stuff will help you. So. We're never going to say, hey, it's my way or the highway. You know? I don't like to use insecticides, things like seven dust, because what it does basically is it kills everything. It kills, not only does it kill the bad bugs that you want, but it also kills the good ones, the ones that fight against the bad bugs. And also the ladybugs, the butterflies, all of that stuff will stop coming to your garden because they're dying. It'll kill praying mantises. It'll kill all of that. You don't want that. You want that stuff. You want a happy balance in your garden. Very and, well. I mean, if you want to use seven dust, whatever floats your boat, and a lot of people do that, but read up on it if you want that on your plants or not. Yeah, there's a, everything is there for a reason. And... Yeah, we got we got to try and get the bad guys out. So we got to put the good guys in, or put them in an environment where the good guys. It's all all at war in your garden, guys. But we're just trying to get more good guys into our garden. And when you're using this, those insecticides, it makes your environment come with these bad guys that are overwhelming. The force that they have will attack all your plants. <laughs> checked off no yes it is a band by the way i do like their music <laughs> you, you can listen just you can listen to seven dust just don't spread seven dust on your garden does that make you happy checked off <laughs> make biochar and a cookie <laughs> becoming a green circle was thinking the same thing <laughs> What's that going to say? I see 7,000 content, actually. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. There's 41 people in the chat. You guys are awesome. I don't have a bell to ring. I gotta get, like, a goofy bell or something. Don't think it goes. Shake. <laughs> <laughs> Got shake. Okay, let's get back to our growing guide. We're on page 15. Do you want me to read and you can finish? So yeah, I don't care. That's fine. I don't care. You want okay, me to go? Or... Oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll do two pages and you can finish up. Okay, so cutworms are the, are the la larvae stage of many species of moth of the Naturidae Natur family. <laughs> I butchered that. These caterpillars generally feed at night and hide during daylight hours. Damage generally is detected as plants cut off near the soil line. The nocturnal habits and their 
discoloration makes them difficult to find. Oh man, those bugs with the same colors in a plant. It's like, where is that? I can't find it. Well, it's right in front of you. It's like a guy. A guy can never find anything in the house. My wife tells me, Joe, can you where's can you get this for me? It's right here in a kitchen table. I'm looking over at a kitchen table. I can't find it. She comes back. It's right there, right in the kitchen table. <laughs> it's the same thing with the plant. Um, so it's the, the bugs are difficult to find, which is required for proper diagnosis of the problem. These pests are more easily detected by examining plants very late or very early in the day. Wireworms are the larvae stage of click beetles. These are spe there are special species of these insects which may attack onions. Eggs are laid in the soil and the larvae, larvae fed on below portions of the plants. While some species have multiple generations in a year, others are capable of living as larvae for one or two years before populating, <laughs> populating <laughs> and becoming adults. Populating. Thrips are primary insects pests of onions. Thrips have rasping mouth parts. You ever see the mouse little suckers that cause physical damage to the onion leaf? Damaged leaves are more susceptible to sub. Sub subsequent <laughs> can't talk subsequent disease and infection as well as being less efficient at photosynthesis. While these insects can appear in a the fall, they are much more common in late winter and early spring as temperatures increase. Population of thripes and the severity of this insect problem in onions can vary year to year. When considering direct damage to the onions, careful scouting of plants should be Begin shortly after the beginning of the year. Special attention should be given to leaf folds and down the neck of the plant. And again, guys, anytime you're looking at any kind of plant in your garden, you're out there. That's the reason why I like hand watering. Because you get to look at every single plant. You get to look from the top to the yeah. bottom. You should also have a notebook. If you have a notebook, write down some notes and a date that you see stuff in your garden. So you know you could prepare for it beforehand. Thripes have a strong presence for these tight areas to provide protection and will go to these locations. Thripes reduce yields in onion by reducing bulb size. Who wants a small, something small? Let's grow big. So grow big, guys. So thripes reduce yields in onion by reducing bulb size. Thus, once the bulb have reached full size, there are uh, quality. There are quality. However, thrips may trans uh, transmit some onion diseases and control near harvest may affect bulb quality. Excessive use of insecticides or use of ineffective insecticides only increase the presence of insect insecticide resistance. And that's exactly what we've been talking about. Oh, look, that's what I wrote there, too. <laughs> what we've been talking about on Grow Big TV. Thus, when sprays for thripes are made, they should be only be made in response. And uh, again, try to be organic as much as you can. If you have any kind of anything, especially of quality of amounts of these bugs. Um, when, we we're, when we're done, let's let's Google what these bugs look like. Okay. So we can kind of give them an idea what to look for in the garden. When you're growing in your garden, you're just as much as growing plants as like as well as edu trying to educate yourself on what these bugs look like. For me, I had taken pictures of bugs and I Googled them. I found these really weird bugs one time and I was like, what is that? So I Googled it and did an image search. It was a stink bug lar like I was like a ba basically a baby stink bug and mm -hmm. they were all over my garden one year and they were really weird looking. They're like round and like neon green and like all these weird colors. So you really have to educate yourself on the bugs as well as the plants because you need to know like, Hey, that's a ladybug or Hey, that's a Harley Quinn bug. Mm -hmm. And you know, you need to know what bugs will eat what so you can be a better gardener. Welcome in, uh, Janice Erfler. Erfler. Welcome in, Janice. Welcome in, 2%. And Haley, she says she's late to the party. Well, welcome in, Haley. You're never too late here. And I'm I'm happy that I said it's a party because that's what we we want to have a good time here. We want to hopefully when you leave here, you learn something, you smile, you meet somebody. You know, we're all trying about having a good time and learn. So right. onion weed management. Managing weeds is critical for successful onion production. 
the most successful what I look at it as. Because the years I haven't had big onions or a lack of it is because of weeds. So managing uh, weeds can compete with onions for light, nutrients, water, and space. In addition to reduce, reducing harvestable bulbs throughout through uh, competition, weeds have been shown to interfere with harvesting process by decreasing efficiency. Weeds can also harbor destructive insects and diseases that can severely uh, damage the presence of the sub subsequent crop. There were several weed species that commonly infect onion. The most common and troublesome weeds are highly influenced by plant and time, crop rotation aids in management weeds, as well as many other pests. Hand weeding effectively controls most weed species. Weeding by hand should be conducted when both the crop and the weeds are small in order to reduce crop damage and to allow for a use of mechanical tools such as hose. <laughs> Removal of large weeds with extensive resistance may damage onions. Uh, damage onion roots or foliage. Where you be at in your and garden what? with my hose? <laughs> <laughs> what's your yeah? What's your? I like my hose in the garden. Where my hose at? <laughs> <laughs> First week of May is uh, naked gardening day. Just to let you guys know. <laughs> um. Okay, Corky, take us home with this. Harvesting, knowledge. curing, and storage. Okay. Bob quality is the most important factor when producing a marketable onion. To ensure maximum quality, onions should be artificially cured. Artificially curing allows the grower to have better control over the curing process. During years when excessive rains and unfavorable drying conditions occurred in field, um, artificial curing will be required. Harvesting onions should be harvested at an optimum maturity. Maturity is best determined by pinching the neck of the growing onion. Necks of immature onions are stiff, whereas necks of mature onions are soft and limber. So remember that, guys, when looking at onions, that's always something that is like, man, is that like, <laughs> is is that limp or what am I looking at? And yes, I was going to say the other thing, but we're, we're trying to have a mature onion conversation, Joe. <laughs> Next I'm trying to hold it in. I'm trying to hold it in. Go ahead. <laughs> Early, now I can't keep a straight face. You're killing me. Early varieties are strongly day length sensitive and thus are more likely to break over at the neck early and uniformly. These onions can be left in a field in this condition for up to a week without determinate under determinate under most conditions. No heavy rains. Later maturity varieties um, may show 20 to 50 percent of their broken over at the neck for optimum maturity. And some of the years this may not occur because the onions have developed a thicker neck. This is usually associated with a mild winter weather. Simply observing the percentage of the tops that have fallen over in not a true indication of maturity since the tops can be knocked over by strong winds. Rain or becoming limp from lack of moisture. <laughs> I can't do this. Onions should be <laughs> carefully examined for softness in the neck and a large bulb size and to indicate time to harvest. Late varieties are highly susceptible to warm weather bacterial diseases and may require a harvest before optimum maturity to prevent widespread infection with the bacterial diseases. Onions should be undercut with a rotating bar or fixed blade when mature and mature and necks are soft and limber. <laughs> the blade or rotating bar should be operate, operate at approximately one inch below the bulb. So as not to damage their base, every effort should be made to prevent excessive bulb <laughs> exposure to the sun, which will cause the onion to blister. Therefore, onions should be <laughs> gathered within a few days of undercutting. If light rain occurs during the field drying, the onion bed should be undercut a second time. This will break soil that has been reattached to the bulb. After onions have field dried for three to five days under sunny 
dry conditions, the roots will top of the, uh, the roots on the, wow, the roots and tops of the onions should be removed. Tops are cut at approximately 1.5 to 2.0 inches above the bulb and roots cut off completely. Extra short necks increase the likelihood of disease and infection. During a clipping, <clears throat> care sh should be taken to prevent injury to the bulbs with the shears and by dropping the bulbs on a hard on hard surfaces such as the bottom of the bucket and other onions. Hand harvested bulbs can be placed into a burlap or mesh bags. Onion bulbs consist of a high proportion of water, approximately 90% of the dissociation. Fat fingers. <laughs> okay. Of the bulbs must be avoided. Uh, moisture is removed from the skin, roots, and stem of the onion bulbs by dry air blown over them. The onions' skins dry and become uniform in color, um, exhibiting a brittle texture. The roots shatter or break off easily when touched. The stem area should shrink in size and be dried to the surface of the bulb. Once the onions have cured properly, the outer leaf scales will help retain internal moisture and protect the onion. The less airflow capacity, the longer it will take to cure um, the onions. Any delay encourages disease growth. Two types of damage occur during the handling of onions. Surface energy, uh, injuries are made in the field by cuts, punctures, and wounds with snips and fingernails. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Welcome in long lifters. Good to see you. So there's a lot of stuff to be said, and I, probably a lot of people's minds are like, what, what did they talk about today? Well, let's rehash a little bit. Okay. Let's. Okay. Let's some. start by the hardest thing first is knowing when your, your onions are ready to harvest. That's where I have an issue as well. Did the wind knock the tops over or are they push over? Okay. It's been so many months. How come my onion tops aren't falling over? So when is the best time to harvest onions? when your your top is falling over right or when you have a what a significant large bulb like how when do you know well it's it's important because you see if, the, if it's limp <laughs> you gotta feel a texture of what it's going on here oh my god i was almost crying before i tried to um, get through it <laughs> without laughing <laughs> Um, you see, you're also going to know by the line, when you look at the onion, you cut it and split it by the lines inside the onion, um, like the blush onion. I mean, you can't, you got to be careful if you don't, if you pick it too early, because it's not going to have the same right taste for, you know, being mature. So you really got to figure out each onion, not every single onion, each onion and when to harvest you don't want to pick too early it's better be late on the onion you know also look at your seeds look how many days to when it's supposed to be mature you know mature when it's when is it supposed to be picked so that gives you a little reference but better later than early when you're picking your onions so that is key but the rehash rehash a little earlier seed starting Let's start with seed starting to rehash what we're talking about. Then we're going to talk about the bugs. We're going to find the bugs and see yeah. what they look like because that's very important. You do, don't do buy those bulbs, those little onion starts because they are made to flower and they're not made to really build some, most of them, some of them are bulb, but they're mainly, they're supposed to flower. All right. Why would you want to buy something that's going to really, the, when you when you cure them, they're they're not good for long. When you start to seed or start from the start, they are meant to store longer. So don't buy those little starts. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your money. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna buy some, and I'll show you some during the year. 
then I'll show you when I start from seeds and see how big they get. And I'm going to start from starts from Dixondale Farms. And I'll show you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow like a couple thousand onions. And we'll see what goes on. We'll do all the results. And we're also going to, I'm going to start seeds um, this week with onions. And I'm going to do a video on that. So hopefully you guys could check out the onion video. So, okay, so we talked a little bit about seeds and what your long day onion, or you a short day onion, or you an intermediate day onion. So know what what area you're in, and you can watch that in the beginning of the video. So that's we got that done. Okay, so if you started from seed, and you're doing your starts, and the the you, the plants are starting to get too long, you could cut them. It's fine to cut them; they're going to grow back. You, and make sure the moisture level is always good in there because if you don't have the right moisture level when you start your uh, onions, they start to fade out and die. And you don't want that stuff because that could create more insects. Okay, so now the ground, the ground, fertilizer, all right, 10, 20, 10, or get your get trifecta, all right? So you want that medi the one in the middle, that number in the mi middle, you want that higher than the other two. All right. So basically, you want a 10, 20, 10, or go get a blood meal. This is organic. All right. So that's a tw that's a 13. All right. The next level, I don't have the I don't have the K, but I do have the P. That's a 15. So that middle level is a little higher. All right. But, and then you, you get your K. Or just get trifecta. Very simple. Luke uh, and my gardener has been doing videos using his trifecta on onions, and they've been very successful. So, Actually, the better the – best videos I've seen on onions is on my gardener. And he actually, from watching one of his videos, showed me how to make starts by growing your own onion seeds. So definitely check out some of his videos as well, because they're very educational as far as starting your own starts, basically. It's really cool. Boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so you got your fertilizer. We started off, we got the 10, 20, 10. That's the level sticks and Dale Farms uses. Um, but if you ever notice, if you guys watch their videos, the soil is very sandy. But they're growing onions. Their onions are great for you. But the fertilizer, the sand, the, I call it sand now because if we look at that land, a lot of tillage, a lot, a lot of tillage. Um, right now, the way of gardening is not tilling your property. And, but if you started off your garden spine or just use the top layer and get over or try to rake, rake it out, you don't really want to touch your soil, guys. There's so much beneficial things in your soil you guys don't even know. Uh, that's the reason why we sow to six inches of soil all the time. Um, okay, so you started your, your, your vegetables off with that. Then after they start growing, you want a high nitrogen base. You could go. If there is diluted P these days, that's probably going to be in the future because of the nitrogen level, uh, believe it or not. That's going to be probably something down five minutes down the road. But then it's going to be all nitrogen-based. Um, you can use your blood meal. You know, there's your nitrogen. Use this all year. High nitrogen base. Or find something else uh, similar to that. But it's basically the fur. You, it's just like grass. You don't want to put roots that's going to grow this long in your garden. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, so that's basically, and then you got to cure your onions when we're talking about the end. So you can't just get a grab an onion in the garden and, you know, just put them out there to eat. You got to cure it a little bit. Anything else you want to add, Corky? No, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, okay, let me. Yeah. I'm going to look for insect diseases when you talk for a second. And Yeah, I'm curious about those thrips. What does it look like? I'm sure you guys are just as interested. Like, what am I looking for when I'm looking for bugs on my plants? Just give me a couple seconds. 
Yeah, GGB, I like, I want to try and grow onions. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I want to invest in it right now. Frederick Von Cold. I'm going to try it. I got blood meal today. Sweet. I love Frederick Von Cold's name. I love that name too. <laughs> Welcome in. Okay, well, we're going to go, I'm going to show you from the University of Minnesota some insect damage. So... Okay. So cutworm set. Oh, there we go. Well, that's I hate a cool thing, by the way. Cutworms are horrible. I had them actually on my rose, my roses. They're horrible. What? what what's going on here? <laughs> this wasn't planned. Okay, let me do this again. Can you see what I'm doing now or no? Yes, kind of. Oh, no, you're not. Okay. No. Let me go back. Okay. No, I mean, never mind. We're good. It's all good. Sorry for the delay, guys. We weren't expecting this part, but this is a good idea to go over stuff. Okay, so cutworms, remove weeds, plant residue, till garden before planting, which no, no more tilling. Plant cardboard collars or aluminum foil where plant stems when planting transplants. Well, that's easy. That's, that's a good idea. Point. I didn't even think about that. Lots of people have been using aluminum foil and they use it around like their um, squash plants too. I thought that was kind of cool. I've never done that, but whatever keeps the bugs from eating your plants <laughs> onion maggot oh so we're gonna i'm gonna try to find more pictures of the insects in a second guys but let's go off some of these uh what they're talking about so this is what happens be, to the plant. i'll be right back joe i have to do something real quick so the onion maggot avoid uh using animal manure or green manure in spring when possible Delay planting onions until after June 1st. Remove and destroy hoist post plants in the fall. Cover plants with a row cover. That's the hair over here to the right. Don't plant onions in the same spot every single year. Purple blotch. Oh, look what happens to the plant, guys, with this disease. So we're going over to diseases, not the insects. Yellow storage onions are more resistant than Spanish onions. You strip irrigation. Don't leave uh, cool coals near the field. After harvest, remove and destroy any or bury any infected leaves. Don't plant onions and leeks or shallots in the same area. That's the same thing for basically all kind of what you're supposed to do with onion. Glossarian, basil rot. Plant varieties with tolerance or resistance to disease. Plant in a well-drained soil. Don't plant onions and garlic chives in the same area. But look at what that. Oh, that's a rot. That's disgusting. All right. Let me see if I can find insects. So these were plant diseases from the University of Minnesota. Just give me a second, guys. We're going to find some stuff here. I want picks. I want picks. Let's see if there's a good picture here. Oh, here we go. We found it. Let's see if you guys could. Can you guys see anything? As you guys know, I can't see the chat. Okay, hold on. I guess you guys couldn't see what I was looking at. Okay, we're back. Let's find the same page now. Okay. Look at this. There's the onion uh, thrips. Look at those. Look at the, oh, that guy's a battler. No, not in my house. <laughs> onion thr thrips are the most injurious insect pest to onions. And this is in Utah. Utah. But it's not just Utah. It's all over the place. Immature and adult thrips uh, refer to feed on young leaves and inner necks of plants. Moderate to severe uh, thrips. Arthrips feeding causes reduced bulb size, as we talked about before. 
um, insecticides, which no, 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 we could do better in that as a society. So we got to use other ways besides just using insecticides, because that means more disease, more, more diseases and more, uh, more bugs will come into your garden. So, and hey, welcome in uh, Riverdale Gardens. I didn't see you before. I didn't say hi to Mike's Chaotic Gardening. Welcome, Mike. I know you've been here. Um, so that's the onion thripes. Oh, thripes feeding injury appears as white uh, silvery patches and snakes uh, streaks on leaves. So if you notice right here with the thumb, ooh. That's terrible, especially when you grow something all year around. You can't wait. It looks all healthy. And then your plant is saying, screw you. I'm I'm going to eat that, not you. Yeah. It looks too good, right? So you're putting all that work and all that energy. You guys, you got to look at your plants. Does that have a stinger or is it just a pointy end? What is that, adult? That's a, that's a threat. I don't a think it has a stinger. Oh, man, no, they're ugly. That's and I have cool. seen them. I definitely have seen them before. I'm going to look it up. So right over here, young larvae is white to pale yellow in color. So that's what, look at that. Host. Onion thrives have a broad host range that include grasses and broad leaves. So if you have high grass somewhere or you have weeds in your garden, you expect to have this on your plant, guys. They will bite you, actually. Um, thrips bite only causes minor irritation and do not usually have long-term effects, but they will bite you. Yikes. Yikes. Um, so these are pests of agriculture crops, home gardens, landscapes, and greenhouses, guys. Primary vegetables include onions, garlic, leeks, cabbage, cauliflower, bean, tomato, cucumber and asparagus wow onion thripe eggs stained pink with acid fusion with onion leaf hmm. i have no idea white onions are at 17 percent right now yellow onions are at 50 and red onions are at 33 so if you guys can vote please we want anything but yellow to win <laughs> So see the on onion plant here? Look at the discoloration. Yeah, not good. That's the yellow spot virus we talked about before. Look at that sucker. Western flower thrips adult in dark, darker yellow and colder and slightly longer with onion thrips. Their mouths are crazy. Yeah. I have never seen one before, so thank God. Thrips prefer to hide in the lower neck of onion plants. So there's a plant here. So they're doing this is a very good article. So here, this is another good, this is perfect. Sources of onion thrips. Eggs, larvae, and adults right here, then adults, and uh, this is where they go to. So that is the main thing. And this is all the stuff we talked about before. I don't want to hear about chemical control and all that crap. Ooh, one second. Related. Oh, that's related searches. Let's see if we can find something else, Quirky. Somebody changed their vote. <laughs> or something, something's happening. Yellow is no longer at 50%. <laughs> no way. Okay. Okay. I found something, I think. Uh, wow. It's almost nine o'clock, guys. These guys are incredible. Okay. Hold on. Let's finish up with this stuff. Oh, don't want that. How to identify and treat common onion pests and diseases. Oh, these bugs kill me. These are, well, lace bugs. Almost look like a stink bug in the soil, in a way. Yuck. I mean, this stinks. You're growing so well, and you're getting little stuff on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<sighs> spider mites. Yeah, That's what a spider those. mite looks like. I've gotten those on my um, celery before. And um, I've soaked my uh, uh, celery and stuff first before I did anything with it with a little mm -hmm. bit of vinegar in the water. And it killed everything. Then you could see oh. it all rise to the surface. Don't just go and eat your celery, guys, because bugs hide in those little <laughs> crevices. So disgusting. <laughs> and that's the same with broccoli, cauliflower, any of those where bugs can hide right in that. Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> welcome in, Hendo. It's, uh, what, 2 o'clock in the morning there? So welcome in, Hendo. Welcome in. And if you guys haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button. We appreciate that. So that's the spider mite. Let me see. Bulb yeah. mites. There, oh, look at that. That's a good picture of the thrip. Thri what else we got? Leaf miners. So you see that like a little streak in a, in a plant? Mm -hmm. You can find them when you see that streak. Oh, onion white rot. That's what that I've gotten is. that before. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Downy mildew. Purple blotch. <laughs> so you're thinking you're growing something nice, healthy, but look at look at that blotch. <laughs> Actually, you know, I never knew it was called a purple blotch. I always thought it was a blotch. Hmm. Learned something doing this today. There's some rust. I get rust all over my um, hollyhocks. I don't know why. I've done everything. I they say it doesn't hurt the plant, but I have tried like to get it off my hollyhocks, and I clip off the the parts that are nasty. But yeah, I've gotten that all over my hollyhocks, and I don't even know why. It's usually because of moisture. That's weird because where I have my black, I have my black Nigerian hollyhocks like at the end of the row where it like gets really hot. So there shouldn't be any moisture there. Hmm, okay. It's really weird. What is this one? Oh. Flower. Okay. Let's stop sharing this. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed our episode. I hope you guys learned a lot and uh, when making us and writing down notes and putting us all together, I was like, wow, that was pretty cool stuff. And I know it was really overwhelming for a lot because it is overwhelming. <laughs> but it's, we're going to try during a season with a lot of these plants. We're going to gauge our, we're going to show you the process from starting to finishing. And that's what we're going to do with onions. It's like uh, it's like going to the gym. You know, if you show yourself every day going to the gym, you become accountable. Well, what we're going to try to do is become accountable for what we're teaching and growing. But hopefully it's 100%. <laughs> but uh, a lot of times it's not. And mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing about gardening. One thing about farmers that farm for... 60 80 years you have losses you have huge losses you have you can't do the same thing every year there's instances that's the reason why you always learn you teach our kids and you teach them all the problems that you have so they don't they learn at an early age the problem is getting them interested to want to learn those problems so they'd be they could teach their kids a lot better way too right okay i'm gonna end the poll and see who won Okay, who won? What do we got? Looks like the yellow onion won at 48%. 45 people voted. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Shawnee Chef, for being here. Thank you, 54 Cal. Appreciate ya. Oh, yeah. wonder why my sweet candy onion seeds never germinated. It just depends. Like a lot of times if your seeds are old, 
they won't germinate. Onion seeds are so fickle. They're so weird. Um, that could be it. Could be you buried them too deep. Could be you overwatered them. I have three kinds of onion seeds I started for this season. Hmm. There could be many factors. The seeds were the seeds were new. Well, oh, I don't know. So thank you for our new members. If we have any new members today, for those that just yeah, came on. Ginger Ninja. Ginger Ninja. Thank you. Thank you. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, memberships now start at two ninety nine for the Biochar Club. Four ninety nine is the Boom. Nine ninety nine is the Big uh, Grow Big Garden Club, and nineteen ninety nine is the Master Gardener. So if you, we appreciate you guys, if you guys could uh, become a member, there's benefits to everything there, and uh, and also uh, what else do we have? Oh, if you guys wanted, because I was asked this, hey, I don't want to give to YouTube. Um, we're going to start putting, you know what, let me show that anyway. Banners. So Corky and I, we share everything on his site. So there's uh, my Venmo PayPal. So if anybody donates to that, 50% goes both ways. So just let you guys know. So it's just easier for us. So if you wanted to do more of a Venmo or PayPal, you guys could do that. Oh, uh, we also have a share network now, a share network. What is a share network? Uh, well, we made a video on that last week. And what we're going to do is you're going to get involved with a group. And uh, we're also going to do something number-wise. But I'm not sure. See, there's, we can't get in trouble with YouTube. So we can't really... Put out phone numbers, only if we have a long relationship. But what you do to share network is if somebody comes out with a video, you got to share it on social media. So we have one on Messenger, Facebook Messenger, where if somebody does a live video, you got to show their video. That's it. If they're going live, you share you share them out by going live. Very simple. And you are you got to be accountable because if you're part of that group and everybody else is, you know, sharing lives, you're not. Then all of a sudden you post, hey, why aren't you sharing my lives? Because, well, you know, you're going to get kicked out of the group. The share network is to help promote everybody that's mm -hmm. in that group. And it's about for groups of 10 people. So those 10 people, you're not going to, if there's 100 people, you're not sharing out 100 people. It's only in groups of 10. Right. So that is very important. So if you want to become in that shared network, there's a video. Jane Doe just posted a link. Uh, go there. You have to write share. And we're going to group you guys up this week so we can start that process. Um, sharing is so important to channels. Um, that's how people grow. That's how you get in algorithms when people share you out. So that is very, very important. Let me see what else do I have for notes. Where's my notes? My notes are a mess. Um, so our next live is Tuesday. Starting in March, we are going at 8 o'clock instead of 7. So just a note, just to make it easy. March, we, we are starting at 8 o'clock, so it's 8 to 10. It gets most most uh, more people on the West Coast, and uh, that's that's how we're going to go about it. Um, so our Tuesday, we're going to do, we're going to do a growing guide and, uh, we'll talk about that in the video and Thursday, we're going to have one of the top people in the world talking about biochar, which is pretty freaking awesome because I know I got a lot to learn about it. So Corky, anything going on your channel? Anything no, um, I do, however, did start my Peter Pepper. My husband started the Peter Pepper today. Awesome. He did that, and um, he started a lot of his hot peppers today. Um, I took some pictures. They're on Wide Family Farm, though. Did I put them on Grow Big? I don't know right now. Um, I took some pictures today of um, my grow station and um, the plants that I have in there, which is the cabbages and stuff right now. Um, yeah, we're just waiting right now. 
Um, as soon as we can, we will start planting outside. Direct sowing peas will be our first plant of the season, unless I am successful at growing this cabbage that I wanted to grow. So, you know, Serena asked an interesting question. And we always talk about companion plant. And I didn't talk about companion plant today because usually onions are great companion plants of many. But what plants are companion plants, good, plant, comp comp uh, good companion plants for onions? And a lot of it does, a lot of them have to do with herbs, mm -hmm. usually like parsley and dill. Uh, a lot of herbs usually help out a lot. Um, I would like to get more thoroughly into that, actually, but I don't have the correct answer right in front of me. But right off the bat, uh, Serena, usually it would be herbs is the best thing and dill and parsley and plants like that. But we'll try to mail you the correct information uh, for that. So I did look at you want me to say what I looked up, though. Go for it. Then I don't have to answer Okay, that's fine. It says onions make a great companion plants for many fruits, vegetables, herbs, flowers, including beets, spinach, alums, which is basically any type of onions, brassicas, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, strawberries, potatoes, lettuce, parsnip, carrots, chamomile, parsley, dill, um, marigolds, and roses. Um. I want to plant a lot of chamomile because it can stop bacteria and stuff like that. It's like really awesome. So I would really like to plant some chamomile like up around some, a lot of my stuff, but I'm also afraid to do that because I feel like maybe the next year I'll get a ton of chamomile. So um, also borage is a really good one. I know I planted that last year and I was really happy with it. I planted it in between my tomato plants and stuff. And it just, it was huge. It did a really good job last year. So that's something to think about. How long onion seeds viable for? I don't know. I People say up to a year. Joe has some that he's had for since when? Oh, I guess stuff from years and years ago. Most mo most of the time, onions are good. Onions could... Okay, my answer. <laughs> I, I, my answer is different from what you're going to write because they have to be politically correct. In the book, one year. So if you use 2003 seeds, your onions should have at least 80 70 to 80% rate of growing onions. And then when you're growing onions, you're not just putting... I'm going to start a... I'm going to do a whole video on it. I'm going to show you old onions, new onions. I'm going to show you a whole variation of stuff. So uh, I'm going to do that this week, by the way. And we'll see what comes up and what doesn't come up. But definitely the answer is I, I would I want to say three years, not one. That's that's what I think. Um, but they definitely did here. If you use it three years, you're probably getting like a 60% rate. But when I sow them, you're, I sow a lot of onions in there because they're easy to pick apart. I mean, we'll show a video on seed starting onions this week. And Garden State Gardener, we're going, a subscription video will be up this week. So, well, up this week. So, uh, it'll be up tomorrow. I'm probably trying to make it tonight. Some kind of video. You know, I'm going to do a happy mail. And that will be from Lathalia's Little Hook. Sent me a whole big box of stuff. I wonder what's in it. I don't know yet. We're going to find out. I think it's food. A lot of jam. A lot of heat. I'm happy. i got to start my diet. What am I doing? Billy, I'm going crazy. Wait till you see this happy mail. <laughs> mail. Um, and one second. What did I always say? Oh, cool. Sunday the 25th is seed exchange here. Perhaps one of the one is in your local for getting free seeds. Exactly. A lot of seed exchanges are all over the place right now. So if you see a seed exchange, go for it. Go check it out. Okay, guys. So we're going to uh, end a live now. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, all your support. We appreciate it. Um, we have hopes and dreams just like everybody else has here and uh 
we want to really grow up, up, high, high, high. So when uh, you'll see us when we're happy, you're going to see us when we're sad. We're going to see us as ourselves for the most part. Um, but grow big out there. Grow huge. Don't go limp. <laughs> Just left that one onion plant. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. You guys, hopefully I made you smile in the night. Take care, everyone. <laughs>